Welcome and thanks for tuning in. I'm Cameron Delano, Strategic Architect with F5, and this is part two in a four-part series of videos showcasing the distributed cloud, web app, and API protection setup and demo guide. The guide will help you set up a sample application and provide you the tools to explore the web app and API protection capabilities of the F5 distributed cloud platform. Here in part two, we'll see how easy it is to create an effective WAF policy using F5's distributed cloud to quickly secure our application front end. We will be building on the deployment demonstrated in part one of the series. So if you didn't get a chance to check it out yet, I highly suggest taking a look at it now. We're also going to explore the F5 distributed cloud console dashboards to give you an idea of the visibility provided by the platform. Let's go ahead and get started. We start once again at our demo repo. This time we'll be heading to the app protection section. Everything we'll be doing in the video is documented in this section. To start with, right click on the link for the test tool and open it in a new browser tab. This is the tool we'll be using to generate attacks on our app. Head back to the load balancer management section of the console and go ahead and click on the copy icon next to our CNAME and paste it into the tool. Now let's go ahead and send our attacks. As you can see, we currently have no protections configured, so we're completely vulnerable. Let's go ahead and fix that. Once again, head back into the load balancer management section. Click the three dots under action and select manage configuration. Now click the Edit Configuration button in the upper right-hand corner of the page. Now, scroll down and find the Web Application Firewall section under Security Configuration. Click the drop-down and change the setting from Disable to Enable. Next, in the Select App Firewall field, click the Create New App Firewall button. Once the New App Firewall form renders, give the firewall a name, and then specify the enforcement mode in the drop down menu. The default mode is monitoring, meaning that the WAF won't block any traffic, but will alert on any request that is found to be violating the WAF policy. Blocking mode means that the WAF will take mitigation action on offending traffic. Here we will select blocking mode. Next, we will specify the detection settings. The default settings are recommended for mitigating malicious traffic with a low false positive rate. But here, we will select Custom Detection Settings in order to override and customize the preset policy detection default. Select Custom Attack Type in the drop-down menu and proceed to specifying the disabled attack types. Here we select Command Execution. Command Execution is an attack against web applications that target operating system commands in order to gain access to it. The next property, Signature Selection by Accuracy, allows us to disable some attack types and use different signature sets for optimal accuracy. For this demo, let's enable high, medium, and low accuracy signatures. Now, scroll down and find the disabled violation list. This enables detection of various violation types, like malformed data and illegal file types. For this use case, we will select custom violations and then specify bad HTTP version. Next, in the Advanced Configuration section, click the Show Advanced Fields toggle and scroll to the Blocking Response Page field. Change the setting from Default to Custom and indicate 403 Forbidden as a response code. By default, the Distributed Cloud WAF looks for specific query parameters like card or password to prevent potential sensitive information such as account credentials or credit card numbers from appearing in the security logs. This can be customized through a blocking response page that can include a custom body. Once finished, select Continue to return to the new app firewall form, then scroll to the bottom and click Save and Exit. Now let's head back and run our attack set again. We should now see our attacks fail. Now that we've successfully applied a policy and blocked attacks, let's look at some of the visibility and security insights provided by the F5 Distributed Cloud WAP. Navigate to Security and click on our Load Balancer. Here we'll see the App Dashboard. The dashboard provides detailed info on all the security events, including location, policy rules hit, malicious users, top attack types, 
and other crucial information collected through F5 Distributed Cloud Web App and API Protection Correlated Insights. Now let's look at some more detailed information on the attacks. Navigate to the Security Events tab. Here we will see the events generated by our first series of attacks. Let's go ahead and generate more traffic. We'll run our attacks a few more times and also hit the Star Ratings website with some valid traffic. After giving a few ratings, head back to the console and refresh our graph to show the new data. Let's take a deeper look at one of the attacks we generated, specifically the Java code injection attack. Here we can not only see the time, origin, and source IP, but also drill down to see very detailed information on the attack. After having a look at the attack, we can also block the offending source. To do that, simply click the three dots on the right under Action to open the menu and select Add to Blocked Clients. We've now come to the completion of part two of the F5 Distributed Cloud Web App and API Protection Demo Guide Showcase. As you can see, not only is it easy to get up and running with app protection, the platform also provides rich data to further tune your policies and protect your critical applications while minimizing false positives. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you'll join me for part three of the series, where we will continue configuring our web app and API protection use cases by diving into the API protection capabilities of the platform. Take care, and see you later.